G'day, I'm Yuki San Dev, and in part 14 of this series, Unity for the Absolute Beginner, we will go over moving backgrounds with texture offset. Alrighty, so today I'm going to go over making a background move or scroll endlessly. Uh, now there are a stack of ways you can do this, but at this beginning stage, I'm just going to show you a very simple way of doing it. This technique will make a texture move on the object. It's pretty easy for beginners once you get the concept. First I'll show you how it works, and then we'll get into the coding. Uh, we'll also give an example of making the background cloud scroll in game the one that we just made earlier in the series. We'll also include a little bit of what they call parallax, which is just a fancy word for having different background objects scrolling at the same time at different speeds or even different directions, sometimes depending on camera movement, gives you a sense of depth in the game. This video won't go over camera tracking, but I will get into that in a later video. So let's get into it. All right, so first of all, let's look at how this particular scroll technique will work. So right click in your hierarchy and create a cube. Reset its transform and double its size. So set XYZ to two and give it a little rotate so you can see at least two faces. Now find uh, some kind of image to drag into your project to use for the texture. There are images in my GitHub that I use uh, and there's a link in the description if you wanna grab those. If you do wanna use your own, uh, then try using something that's seamless, meaning that they can be tiled and you wouldn't see any seams between the images. Drag the image into your project window. I'm going to go with this industrial image. Now select the image and make sure wrap mode is set to repeat. And now drag the image onto the cube, either in the scene or in the hierarchy. Unity should have auto created a material and put it in a folder called materials. Now click on the material in your materials folder and you will see our image is now inserted into our albedo slot. Albedo is the main color or the main texture of the material. In this case, we're using industrial as the texture, so we'll leave the color white. Now click edit up here and you can see all the properties for the standard shader. The one we will be dealing with today is main text, which as you can see is the albedo texture, which in our case is the industrial image. Now click on the cube and expand our material shader. And you can see pretty much exactly what we just saw in the material inspector. Uh, now you can see two tiling and two offset windows. The one we want is the first one for the main maps, not the secondary maps one. So basically in a nutshell, we have laid our industrial texture onto the material, which in turn has been applied to the cube. This material is laid across each face of the cube in a certain position, and we can change that position. Hover your mouse over offset X or offset Y, click and hold the left mouse button down and drag it to the left or right. And you will see the texture scroll across the cube as you do it. Just a side note, notice that each face is scrolling the texture individually. Um, just remember this in the future because if you use a texture scrolling on a surface that has many faces, then you're going to get some pretty freaky undesired effects like this. Uh, but since background scrolling is only done on one face, generally we don't need to worry about it. Anyway, back to it. So this texture will keep scrolling and keep repeating as you drag X and Y. So all we're going to do in the script is automate it by changing the offset values. Okay, so let's, uh, so I'm going to set my offset values back to zero. Now set rotation on the cube back to zero and then size the cube up until it fills your game window. And don't forget to lock the X, Y, Z so the cube keeps its shape. Otherwise the texture will probably get stretched. Then just above the offset values we just played around with, uh, change tiling to create the desired detail. Uh, I think I'm going to stick with tiling 1 on this because this texture is actually pretty good just on its own, doesn't need to be repeated. Um, I'm going to change my shader to unlit and texture. 
yeah, it's better. It's a little bit sharper and you don't, you don't have to do this. Uh, sometimes it works out all right, but just I, I can't be bothered playing with the lights. So it's just better to have the texture unlit so there's no reflections. Now drag the offsets again to watch it scroll. So using the cube is a bit overkill and uh, later if you wanted to have multiple scrolling backgrounds then a cube would just not be viable at all. So delete the cube and create a plane. Uh, I'm going to name mine background. Reset its transform. Rotate it 90 degrees on X and 180 degrees on Z. And put yourself in 2D mode so you can see it properly and resize it so that it fills the game window. Now drag the industrial material onto the plane, uh, not the image, the material. Cool, and just make sure your offset is back to zero and the tiling is to your liking. I'm going to keep mine at one. And get out of 2D mode and fly around the plane. Um, and you can see that there's just the one face to work with. Good stuff. So now we're ready to automate scrolling it. So let's create a script in the project and I'll name it something move background. Drag it onto the plane that we just created. Cool. We are ready. So double click the script to open it. All right, so first off, we're going to need some variables. So just after the first curly for the class, type in private material mat and then private float offset and then public float speed equals 0.5 F. Alrighty, now in start method, type in mat equals get component renderer dot material. I'll explain all this after we're done with the code. There's just a couple more lines to go. Then in your update method, type in offset plus equals time dot delta time times speed. And then mat dot set texture offset. And then in speech marks, you want main text. Don't forget the underscore before it. Comma vector two dot up times offset. Uh, also do make sure you get the case right in the main text uh, because it is case sensitive. So make sure there's a capital M and a capital T in there. All right, let's go through this. So the first declaration is to create a material container to hold our material for the script to use. And we just named it Matt. Then the line in the start method retrieves the actual material from the object that the script is attached to. It first gets the renderer, then it gets the material. In our case, it's the industrial image. Now the script knows what the material is, so we can move it. Offset is the increment that the material will move. We need time.delta time in there, otherwise it would scroll crazy fast. So the offset now will increase by the speed approximately every second rather than every frame. Then the last line is changing the main text's texture offset value to the variable offset value. And yep, set texture offset is a built-in function that's part of the material class. Easy. Alrighty, so let's save this and run. Cool. And if you want, you can click on the background in the hierarchy and drop down the shader in the inspector to see the offset automatically changing. Okay, so this script is complete as is for scrolling a basic background, so you could just use it as it is. Um, but I'm going to add a couple more things to the script to make this a little more usable with multiple backgrounds. So back into the script. Okay, first of all, let's add a slider to our inspector to make it easier to set the speed variable. So above our speed declaration, type in a square bracket range, then in brackets minus 0 0.5, comma 0 0.5 if, and end it with a square bracket. 
Cool, this will create our slider within the range from 0.5, or negative 0.5, sorry, and positive 0.5. Now we can scroll up or down. Just a little side note, this range statement can be used on any float variable to get a slider in your inspector and can be rather useful for fine tuning variables like speed. Uh, all you need to do is type in the range statement directly above the variable that you want the slider for, that you want to control. Now, if we wanted to scroll left and right, we could just put vector two dot left or right down here in the code. But rather than doing that each time, let's put in a couple of cases to handle it. If you're following the series, then cases are a new item. Um, cases are kind of like if statements, if you like. Um, let's just do one and you'll see what I mean. So first of all, let's make a new public string variable called direction. So public string direction. Now, after the offset line, type in switch and then in brackets direction. Then put a couple of encasing curly brackets underneath and inside those brackets type in case and then in speech marks up. Then drag our move code uh, directly below it. And then if Visual Studio didn't put it in automatically uh, below that type in break and then a semicolon. So you should have three lines there in total. Now copy all those three lines and paste them directly below the ones you just did and change up to right and change vector two up to vector two right. Okay, so now we have a new public variable in the inspector for our background called direction. In the inspector, you'll be able to type in a string and you'll either type in up or right. So if you have it set to up, then the code will follow the instructions in the first case and it will move the background up or down. If you have it set to right, then the script will follow the case, the second case, and move it left or right. So let's uh, save this. Alrighty, back in the editor. So select your background object, and in the inspector, you will now see the direction field. Uh, so you can either type up or right in there to change the direction. Uh, I'm going to try right. Now, just to remember too that this is case sensitive. So however you spelt it with whatever case you did in the script is how you have to spell it in that string field. If you get it wrong, uh, it just won't move. So you'll know. And run. There we go, moving sideways. And now we also have our slider so we can control the direction and speed. It's really only there so you can kind of find the sweet spot once you have the desired speed remember the number that's in this field and uh, stop the game and enter that number because you remember it won't save while it's running. Uh, I'm going to go with up and let's see, 0 0.06 for speed. That looks like a nice speed. Cool. Now I'll stop the game and enter them in to make them stick and then run again. Cool. So this script is useful uh, and you can now attach it to multiple backgrounds and each of those backgrounds will have their own individual speed and direction settings. So the script can control more than one background. Alrighty, so let me open up another little project here to show you. So here I have two background sets. Uh, both sets are using this, just the one script, the same exact script. So this space one is just scrolling the star field at the back. The moving object in front is just a sphere being rotated. Um, because the sphere has many faces, it would look weird scrolling a texture across it. So uh, rotation was a better option in this case. As you can see, the star's object is using the same script with scroll speed and direction. And the second one has three backgrounds, all using the very same script each with their own speeds. Each background is slightly ahead of the other and the aeroplane is in between the layers so it passes through and beneath the clouds. As you can see in the scene, uh, well it's kind of hard to see, but there are three layers. There's the ground layer and the two sets of clouds. 
uh, watch what happens if I change the clouds object to right in my inspector and run. Now that layer moves sideways while the other two remain up and down. So both these background sets are using the same simple script to get them moving. Now let me open up the game we just made earlier in the series, game one. So with this one, I got the original background image from game one and I cut the clouds out in Photoshop and paste them onto a transparent background, exported each layer as a PNG. And then in the editor, I added each image to a separate plane object and then set their speeds a little different. And this was the end result. If you do want to use transparencies to create these uh, scenarios, then remember to set the rendering mode to transparent in your shader properties. Also, these three layers are in my GitHub link in the description if you would like to try something with those. And that's it. A basic script to move your backgrounds. I will at some stage follow this up with backgrounds that follow camera or character movement. I'm not going to do a recap in this video because I said it all in the scripting part, so you can just backtrack to that. Uh, also, I don't really have a heads up for the next video this time, uh, kind of out of whack this week and uh, hadn't really planned ahead. As always, any suggestions or requests are always welcome, so watch this space and I hope to see you in the next video.